beloved, you are welcome to another episode of the way of salvation. I've been dealing with some of the things that happen because we are harboring fear in our bodies. The last time I was talking about wrong decisions because of fear. Do well that you will not take wrong decisions because of your fear for a, a, a demon, a demon and a virus. I, I have shared in one of the episodes that some Christians even dread hearing the word demon. Eh? But why? If you are even afraid to hear the name demon, how can you stand up against them? Please, man up, stand up, and don't be afraid, okay? Our God is still alive. The same God you read about him in the Bible is still alive. So don't allow fear in your bodies. I'm still dealing with what happens when we have fear in us. I'm still dealing with that. So agree with me today in this episode. As we turn our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 7. The background story is that the Syrians surrounded the city of Samaria. So there was too much hardship. The, the people couldn't go out because the enemy had surrounded them. And the prophet of God, Elisha said, the next day, there will be a turnaround and prices will go down. Things will become very cheap. You see, when he said that, the next day, as the word came to him, let's read what happened. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the sound of chariots and the sound of horses. The noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. Amen. The first point I want to deal with today is that fear will let you run when no one is pursuing. Fear will let you run for your life when no one is pursuing. In life, you have seen people that are running when nobody was coming. It's all because of fear. I will never forget that one brother was at home and he said he was hearing the sound as if somebody was in his own home. He ran outside, running away, left his door open, and he was even running half naked, all because he thought someone was in his house. <laughs> the problem was that he was acting in fear. It is exactly what happened to the Syrians in the scripture I read. They had surrounded the city of Samaria. They had, they had surrounded the people of God, putting them in perpetual discomfort. No one could go out. No one could come in. But God put fear on them that they ran away. They thought Israel had hired kings after them. So they ran and left everything behind them. They ran for their lives. It was fear. What I'm saying is that because God caused fear to be on them, they ran away. But the opposite is happening now. The opposite is happening in the world today. God, our God, has allowed a demon to kill. I said he's doing two things. On the one hand, God is using the coronavirus to punish sinners and warn them of his imminent coming. On the other hand, he is testing the faith of people who believe in his potency. 
So if God has allowed a demon to destroy, he has not put fear on his people. God has not put fear on you to run away. It is rather demons that are now putting fear in people. You see, let me flip it. In the story I read, it is God who caused the Syrians to run away from his people. Let me ask another question as I turn it again. Will God or will you run away because demon is trying to put fear in you? I've seen that people are so much afraid of death. And because of this fear, we have thrown our faith away. Because of fear of death, we have thrown our faith away. It is rather a demon that is killing. So if you are a child of God, you don't have to have any fear. In fact, this time, it should be sinners who didn't live and respect God, who lived without reverence and reference to God. They are the ones who should be afraid by now. But not the children of God. If a demon is trying to kill, sinners are the ones who should be afraid. Not the children of God. So if you are living in fear now, it means the demons have put fear on you and you will run away and leave your, your lives behind. You see? Don't do that. And, and, and run away. It is very sad. You have to understand that God is not pursuing you. Mr. Christian, Mrs. Christian, God is not pursuing you with the coronavirus to kill you, okay? This one is coming after sinners. So don't behave as if God has sent us. I even heard a pastor, a pastor who, I heard him say, oh God, spare us from this angel of death. For your information, this is not an angel of death. This is a demon of death. Sent to destroy those who don't serve God. You see? So don't run away from the house of God. That is what, what is very sad. We are running away from God. Just like the Syrians were running away. Eh? Today the pastors are the ones who have joined the politicians. To say let's run away from God. By closing the churches. It is very unfortunate. Don't run away because God is not pursuing you. It is fear that is causing you to run away from him. So stay intact with your faith for the virus will not attack you. Amen. Okay. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse 11 says that when Saul, who was the king of Israel, and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine. The Bible is talking about Goliath. They were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 38 says that, So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put on a bronze helmet on his head. And he also clothed him with a coat of mail. Hallelujah. This point I'm talking about is that fear will let you act cowardly. Fear will let you act cowardly. King Saul acted because of the threats of Goliath. He acted cowardly before a small boy, a teenager who was David. A small boy. How can you give your armor to a small boy to go and fight someone who is fighting a nation for which you stood? How? You should come out and fight. It is very shameful that the coronavirus has exposed some pastors who said they were leading the people of God. They are acting like King Saul. They are running away from a Goliath. But to me, this virus is not even a Goliath. You see, it may be your Goliath, but you have to stand 
as David stood. I asked you in the other episode that if you are facing a Goliath or you are facing a physical or a spiritual battle, will God tell you to fight and see his salvation or he will tell you to run away? So my question to Christians who are running away today is that will God tell you to move away from his house? Because the virus can spread in his presence. In fact, this age has seen the most ridiculous thing in the history of Christianity. I tell you, we have reduced God to nothing that he cannot do anything. It is very, very unfortunate. We are acting cowardly. Pastors are speaking as if what is in the Bible is lie. I heard a man of God say that, hey, this is not the time for Christians to assemble in the church because the coronavirus is real. Hey! God who said I will not put none of the diseases on you, is he also not real? The coronavirus is real. My God is also real. He can protect his people. You see? Don't let the coronavirus cause you to run. You see, some people behave as if they behave like someone who is at home. You try and disguise yourself as a monster trying to frighten him. You will see how they will behave. They will run away. Whereas it's just something to frighten you. That is what we are doing. Like I said, God is testing your faith to see whether you truly believe in him. Such people will give themselves high blood pressure because when they hear the news that hey, this is what has happened, this is what has happened, they are deeply afraid and they are acting cowardly. Don't act cowardly, but if you are a true Christian, say these words after me. If you believe that almighty God you serve can protect you, say these words after me. That because Jesus is with me, I will live in peace and no evil will come near me. Say it again. Because Jesus is with me, I will live in peace that no virus will come near me. Hallelujah. If you say that, you will glorify God. Because if our God cannot save us from these things, then why did you give your life to him? That is very sad. So, don't let fear cause you to act cowardly. Okay, as I continue today, I want us to look at another question. Why do some Christians live in fear now? Why? That many Christians around the world are living in fear. What is the reason? The the first reason is that it is simply lack of faith. They don't have faith in our God. As I said, even preachers are are, are condoning with politicians that we shouldn't go to the house of God. I would never support it. I have declared my stand that I don't support such a decision because I believe that my God heals. My God can prevent the virus from attacking his own children because he has said and promised me in his word that I should not be afraid of perilous pestilence. I should not be afraid of any pandemic. God has said in his word in Psalm 91. I read it to you the other time. So if you are afraid, you don't have faith. You don't have faith in God. It is very sad. You see, I've been talking about faith that is being pushed away by fear. Let me pause here to tell you that I have deep respect for the first century Christians. When I teach about church history in church, it is very unfortunate that some of the so-called men of God who call themselves professors, reverend, doctor, archbishop, emeritus, did, did you actually go to school? Did you actually study the church history? Did you? In the first century, when the Romans were attacking Christians, they were not afraid. Read your Bible well and read your church history well. They were not intimidated at all. They put them through 
a lot of horrible things. But they stood and glorified God. So I respect them a lot. When, you move, when I move away from the first century and come to the, those who lived in the medieval times, they were also living in faith. Some of the hymns John Wesley and his brother wrote. I'm talking about the founder of the Methodist church. Some of the hymns they wrote. You, you go through the lines of the, of the songs they wrote. You could see that, my God, these people were deeply spiritual. But today, computer age Christians, they just make the church as, as, a, as a social club. They just go to church. Even in the church, they are worshiping with their brothers. They are worshiping with their boyfriends. So they have not seen the power of God before. But in those days, they saw war. They saw famine. They saw threats. They saw enemy threats. Like, like Samaria being surrounded by enemies. Then there you call on the name of God and say that I know God will deliver us. Some of the soldiers who fought in the first and the second world war fought and fasted and God delivered them. I want to remind you, English people, have you forgotten the battle of Dunkirk? Have you forgotten the miracle that God did? If God can cause windstorm and, and rain and things to let the enemy be at peace for a war to be won, the same God is what we are talking about here. I don't understand why. You see, the reason why today's Christians don't have faith in our God is because of the crop of pastors. They call themselves men of God because of the food they can get. Number two, because of position and fame. They, they are happy to be associated with the presidents and the queens and kings of this age. So, they should rather consult the men of God. And we will tell them what is actually happening in the spirit. Today's people don't believe in God. Because the preachers now, they just preach from the Bible. Just to earn their salary and don't believe in what they are preaching. I was watching CNN and one of their uncles who asked this so-called man who is lying to Americans that is the best preacher. You know what I'm talking about. This guy who is not a man of God. He does, God doesn't know him. But they are hailing him in America as if he's somebody. You know who I'm talking about. I don't want to mention that. He asked him, in fact, it is God who led the CNN reporter or presenter ask this question. He asked a simple question. He said, Pastor, you are a spiritual man. What is happening to our country? In fact, I wish I was the one that, that was asked this question. You know the answer he gave. You know, you see, I will not say that life is not without the hardship and Christianity has hardships and, you know, you will go through some hardship. Nonsense! He was beating about the bush. He couldn't answer that question. Because, look at his stomach. This pastor I'm talking about is now pregnant. He's, he, he, you can look at his stomach that he's pregnant. With, he's six months pregnant, ready to deliver a baby. Do you go and sit under such a man of God? He's not even a man of God. You see, the crop of men of God these days, it is, in fact, I thank God for allowing this virus in this time. It has come to expose men of God big time. It has come to expose them that they didn't believe in what they were preaching to the people. It was just church rhetorics and to deceive the ignorant. They were just bragging and talking and talking and talking for nothing. Just trying to preach about emotion. But now that there is virus, Look at the way they are behaving. I would never behave like that. I stand for my God that I still say that he can do all things. That is why he has sent me. And our church motto and principle is that with God, all things are possible. When, when you hear, hear that, that word, you will be ashamed of faith. Because we know the code we are preaching about. Lack of faith is simply causing the Christians now to live in fear. They don't have any faith. It is very sad. So put fear away because the love of God is still with us. 
The next reason is that, the next reason why some people live in fear is that because they live by the sight of what they see. Simply put, they live by sight. You see, today people are just living by sight. And what is the sight? It is the sight of television. It is very, very sad. You see, in this period, I only listen to the news just to sample the views of people who profess to be Christians and then try to analyze whether they have faith or not. But other than that, when I, when I listen to the nonsense some of them are saying, it pinches me seriously. It makes me very angry. You see? Why? When you look at television, some people are saying this. Some people are saying that. Some, some people are doing that. It's all because of what they see in the news. By, 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 by them reporting, oh, you see, this person died today. The number of people died today. The number of people died. So when they see that, then fear increases. Don't live by such a sign. We walk by faith and not by sight. So let them report whatever they want to report. We believe that our God still saves. We believe what our God has promised us concerning pandemics. He doesn't lie. He cannot lie and he will not lie. Hallelujah. See? You are, you, you are living in fear because of what you see and hear from the news. Don't let what you see or hear deceive you. You see? So, so you don't have to walk by sight, by the sight of the television or by the sight of what you see around you. If you do that, then you are going contrary to the word of God. You have to walk according to faith in the word of God and not by what you see outside. You see, there is an irony in Christianity. Whatever happens outside is happening because of the news. We are also Christians in the house of God. We are also hearing and seeing things differently according to the news of the Bible. <laughs> you see? So don't live by the news of the people of the world. Live by the news of the word of God. I'm still here to encourage you that our God still heals. That is why he sent me to tell you to live in faith. Because with God, all things are possible. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.